Another hot sprint day in the Vuelta as we move into Andalusia. Could Juan Fana double up again? We're going from Fuentes del Maestre to Sevilla. We have a few rolling hills in the first two-thirds of the stage, and the last 50 k's are pretty flat. There's an intermediate sprint close to the finish, 25 k's, uh, including bonus seconds there before a flat finish in Sevilla. I actually went on holiday in this region last year for a couple of weeks. It was really good. Great food, great restaurants, etc. We're in the Extremadura. I didn't go there. I was actually in Sevilla and Cordoba and um, had a really great time. Anyway, the sprint teams, uh, Visma Lisa Bike were controlling, so happy days for Red Bull Bora Hansgrohe and the red jersey as of yesterday. Primoz Roglic, who's all smiles. So pretty chill. Well, not chill. It's actually very hot. Very hot but relaxed peloton for the most part, although with about 45 k's to go, they got really nervous all of a sudden. I still don't really know why. Maybe it was worried about crosswinds. We see Little Trek coming to the front, Red Bull, Bora Hansgra. Uh, maybe it was because of the road furniture as we're coming up to some bigger towns and cities, which is why they came to the front. That spelt the, the end for the breakaway, which was Uskaltel and Akipo Cone Farmer once again. Uh, and here we have the intermediate sprint. Wout Van Aert sprinting with Caden Groves in his wheel. Groves goes to the other side of the road, the shorter line, because it's a slight right-hand bend, and he takes it, although we can't because it's such a high... The exposure is so high from the sun. We couldn't really see who took it. They were saying to each other, like, do you know who took it? It was actually Caden Gross who took the three points uh, gain on Wout Van Aert. Here we have some bridges, road furniture, and that does for Owen Duhl. He's in the hoods. The others are in the drops, and he hits a bump that is not really visible. There's something in the road, and that shakes him off. Uh, his handlebars, and he goes down. Very similar to Valverde's crash in the Vuelta a few years ago when Carapaz was behind him. Duel gets up, but Costa, who went over him, has to abandon the race. And so the other GC teams, Victor Campanats for Lennart van Aetveld, Byron Victorious with Sutterlin for Antonio Tiberi, and Red Bull is the last one for Primoz Roglic. There's the 4K to go banner, the safe zone, and it's a right-hand turn and then right again, and we can see that Roglic is actually about fourth wheel in the red jersey, being kept in much more full position than in the Tour de France. He's got space around him. He's not having to go too quick through these corners. And now the last 3.7 Ks is perfectly straight. So Red Bull stay on the front. DSM, Fermanic, Post, and L are keeping Pavel Bittner in four position. Lander has a mechanical, but again, no problem. He gets the same time because he's in the safe zone. And it's only with about a mile left, Alperson de Kernick come to the front with Quinton Hermans, and they have a, a fully stacked train today. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six riders. Afini's with Van Aert, and Van Aert, he's basically just going to focus entirely on Caden Groves. Maybe he was bluffing in the intermediate sprint that he was that was how he was planning on sprinting again from in front of Caden Groves, but actually for the final sprint, he ignores everything around him. Volta tries to move him up on the left-hand side. His teammate says, no, nah, staying on Groves' wheel. Uh, and we can see Alperson actually almost have too many numbers uh, and the speed perhaps drops a little bit again, uh, which means Groves doesn't start his sprint. DSM move up Bittner really, really well side-by-side side with Van Aert. And then we see again Afini he goes to the right-hand side, trying to give Van Aert the option to follow him for his lead-out and to Marche for Arne Marit on the left, Bittner being dropped off on Van Aert's wheel, fighting Cockard for it. And Van Aert again says to Afini, nope. He thinks about it, but he goes on to Graydon Grove's wheel because it's they're the two quickest riders so far in the race. But that lead out from Afini maybe makes Caden Groves think twice. When we actually cut back to the front on image, we see Groves looking right as if he's looking for the Van Aert behind Afini. And remember, wow, Van Aert jumped to the right-hand side of Groves the other day when he won the sprint and got the jump on him. But today he jumps the other side through the space to the barriers and gets the jump on Groves. Groves misses it. That's his sprint pretty much over. Bittner gets the back of Wout Van Aert, and Van Aert's gone from far once again. Bittner looks like he's coming around pretty easily, but it's actually much tighter than we thought. It would be a bike throw and a photo finish once again. But you can see Groves 
Or maybe he was just expecting Van Aert to come on the right-hand side like the other day. Maybe Alperson, they drilled, leave space to the left-hand side so Caden can jump through that space, which they didn't do the other day. And then Van Aert boxed him in. But Van Aert, once again, he just gets to jump on Groves and Groves looks around just at the wrong time. You see it's all over once you, you know, they got six pedal strokes up to speed. There's nothing Groves can do at that point. But Bittner looks like he was coming around pretty comfortably with about 50 to go or 75 to go, but just stalls a little bit in the last 50 meters. But Van Aert, he throws too early and perhaps could have won. He throws here, which then causes Bittner to throw and then Van Aert still has time to pedal for a bit, but still loses the sprint. Bittner wins by about uh, a rim width. His first Grand Tour stage, big result for the young Czech sprinting talent. Ahead of Van Aert, then Groves, Cockard, Stefan Kung, Corbin Strong, Jonathan Narvaez, Arna Marat, Garofoli, Soto rang out the top 10. Here's what Bittner had to say after the stage. First Grand Tour, first Vuelta, you're already a winner. How does it feel? Oh, it's uh, unbelievable. I mean, only a few weeks ago, a few days ago, I got my first pro win. So, uh, yeah, to get uh, the win at my first Vuelta is it's really, I, I still don't believe it. <laughs> it doesn't come by coincidence because uh, your team worked a lot for that. How were you organized? Uh, yeah, I think if we look at the whole year and the last few years, I think with DSM we, we did a, a big portion of work and a lot of work went into this, a lot of people. And especially in the final, the whole team was working really, really good. and. Uh, he had to beat Dan Wout in a, in a long sprint. He's one of the best long sprinters in the world. It's, yeah, it's just crazy. Did you think you would do that, beating Wout van Aert? Uh, I, I told the guys today, yeah, today we can really do it, guys. I really believe in myself. And uh, yeah, then uh, when the opportunity opened, I just opened my sprint and went full gas to the line. And somehow it went. So yeah, I, I, guess, yeah, I guess yes, yeah. You come from Czech Republic. It's not often that the Czech rider wins at La Vuelta. Uh, 11 years ago, yeah. the next T-bar, 10 kilometers from here. Yeah, I got uh, asked a lot of questions that it would be really cool to win. I was like, yeah, maybe one day I can do it, but to do it in a, on the first try is just unbelievable. And I hope it is just the start of uh, Czech cycling coming back to the, to the top. And the start of a great career for you as a sprinter or more than a sprinter? Hopefully, I don't know, I, I actually never really see myself as a sprinter more as a classics rider, but I guess, uh, yeah, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> Tomorrow is an up and down stage, it's like an 8k 4% finish, will it be a breakaway? Will Bora go for Roglic, will Visma go for Wout Van Aert? Should be interesting, see you tomorrow, ciao.